Hello, welcome to Prafun Gorkar Education and Channel. Today my online practical is on complete blood count. That means complete hemogram performed in your college laboratory as well as during internship. And I will consider following points: one, introduction; two, requirements; three, various CBC tests; four. Hemoglobin determination, five RBC count, six WBC count, seven differential WBC count, eight platelet count, nine determination of PCV, MCV, MCH and MCHC, and ten clinical significance of CBC. Introduction. You will find in a clinical laboratory. Practically for every patient, CBC report is recommended by physicians like routine urine examination. CBC report gives idea not only about anemia but also of bacterial, viral, and parasitic infections and blood-related, hereditary, and other disorders. Examples of some of these CBC reports I will discuss with you at the end of this lecture. In CBC determination. Following tests are performed: hemoglobin determination, RBC count, WBC count, differential WBC count, platelet count, PCV, MCV, MCH, and MCHC. Well, first hemoglobin determination by Drakkins method, and these are all the requirements. One, blood. Collected in EDTA and two coagulant, and it may not be fasting. It is necessary to collect two to three ml blood in anticoagulated tube, and it is mixed immediately, very carefully, as shown here. More quantity of blood may produce microclots, and less quantity of blood will leave excess EDTA, which will change morphology of Blood cells. If you are using vacuum tender for blood collection, then you must follow proper order of blood collection as shown on the left hand side. If more tests are there, then you can decide the order for EDTA blood collection. Then all other requirements are as follows: test tubes and test tube rack. Hemoglobin pipette of 20 microliter, Drakkins reagent, and a photometer. For the test, Drakkins reagent and blood should be at room temperature. Procedure one, as shown in the figure, in a medium-sized test tube, add 5 ml of Drakkins reagent. Two, mix blood carefully, and from this, draw. 0.02 ml of blood in hemoglobin pipette and wipe excess blood on the sides of the pipette carefully. Three, add this blood in Drakkins reagent, rinse HB pipette and mix the mixture very well and keep at room temperature for five minutes. Four, read optical density of this mixture by placing it. In a cubic and using green filter of the photometer, or at 520 nanometer. Fine. Next, transfer hemoglobin standard of 15 gram in a cubic and read optical density same as you have done in the case of the test. Six. Use BS formula to calculate the blood hemoglobin value as shown on the left hand. Side and kindly watch our videos on photometers and spectrophotometers for proper understanding of their use. Principle of Drakkins method. In the Drakkins method of hemoglobin estimation, hemoglobin is oxidized to methemoglobin by potassium ferricyanide in the reagent, which reacts with cyanide ions of potassium cyanide to form. Reddish brown color cyanomethemoglobin. Odi of cyanomethemoglobin 
is directly proportional with concentration of hemoglobin in blood and it is compared with the cyanobeth hemoglobin standard of 15 grams. Next experiment is determination of red blood cell count and requirements are like this. 1. Patients PDTA blood. 2. RBC diluting fluid that is 3% sodium citrate. Then a specific RBC pipette. 4. Improved nobar chamber. This is very important component of this experiment and from the designated areas as I have shown on the left hand side R are meant for RBC count determination and W means those areas which are meant for WBC count. Then find a specific cover slip which can be placed on the nobar chamber and 6 a microscope. Procedure mix anticoagulated blood as shown on the left hand side then draw blood up to 0.5 mark in a red blood cell pipette. Carefully wipe the excess of blood outside the pipette by using cotton or a gauze. Draw diluting fluid up to 0.01 mark of the pipette. Then the pipette is rotated carefully by keeping it horizontal during mixing. And after 5 minutes, by discarding few drops from the pipette and holding it slightly inclined, introduce small quantity under the cover slip which is placed on the counting chamber. Allow the cells to settle for 2-3 to three minutes. Place the counting chamber on the edge of the microscope. Switch to low power objective and adjust light and locate the large square in the center with 25 small squares. Now switch to high power objective and then read the cells in the 4 corner squares and in the center square as it is shown on the left hand side count the red blood cells in these squares and then use the formula as shown on the left hand side to determine the final count of red blood cells. The principles involved in RBC count are 1. First use of 3% sodium citrate which preserves the morphology of cells very well. 2. RBC pipette dilutes blood 200 times. 3. Cells are counted in one fifth part of one square millimeter of RBC area. And 4. The depth of counting area is equal to 0.1 mm. Hence, cells are actually counted in 1 divided by 10,000 part of 1 square millimeter. Hence, to get count for 1 square millimeter, it is necessary to multiply counted cells by 10,000 and cells are then equivalent to 1 microliter of blood. And yes, remember, 10,000 microliters make 1 ml. Next experiment is determination of WBC count and for this experiment, the requirements are the same as for RBC count. Only thing is, a uh, WBC diluting fluid is used, which is 2% glycyl acetic acid, and a specific WBC diluting pipette is used, as shown on the left hand side. Procedure is like this: first, mix blood very well, and then draw blood up to. 0.5 mark of a WBC pipette. Then carefully wipe excess blood outside the pipette by using cotton and draw diluting fluid up to 11 mark. Mix the contents in the pipette and after 5 minutes by discarding few drops fill the counting chamber and allow the cells to settle for 2 to 3 minutes. Then by using a microscope 
focus on one of the W marked areas uh, by turning object to low power and count cells in all four W marked corners. Example if counted cells in four WBC areas are 50, 55, 45, and 50 equal to 200, multiply by the factor 50 to get cells, and the number is 10,000 per microliter of blood. The principles involved in WBC count are 1. First, all interfering RBCs are destroyed by 2% glycyl acetic acid. 2. WBC pipette dilutes blood 20 times. 3. Cells are counted in 4 square millimeter area in depth of 0.1 millimeter. Hence, actually, cells counted are in 1 divided by 50 square millimeter area. Hence, it is necessary to multiply counted cells by 50 to get WBC count per 1 square millimeter which is equal to 1 microliter blood. In blood cell counting, you must take good precautions for accurate cell count determination. First of all, practice filling of counting chamber well. As shown on the left hand side, figure A indicates counting chamber is filled properly and figure B indicates that counting chamber is not filled properly. Similarly, air bubbles should not be present. And when cells are counted, you need to count cells touching the borderline of counting area also as shown on the left hand side, but of only two of any two sides of the square. Then for proper understanding of microscopes and microscope practice, watch our YouTube video on YouTube. Next experiment is determination of differential WBC count and the requirements for this practical are patient's blood, glass slides, glass rods, Lishman or right staining solution, stopwatch, phosphate buffer pH 7.0, cell counter and a microscope. And procedure is like this. After collecting patient's blood, immediately place a drop of blood on a clean and dry glass slide and make blood smear as shown on the left hand side. Use proper spreader side angle as shown here at about 30 to 30 degrees. Blood smear should be good as shown on the left hand side. Next, dry the blood smear at room temperature and make identification mark on it using a pencil. Next. Then place the dry blood smear on the glass rods and cover it with either right staining solution or Lishman solution and keep for about 1 minute. Then add equal number of drops of phosphate buffer and mix by gentle blowing and keep for 10 minutes. Next, wash the stain slide by using tap water and dry the stained blood smear at room temperature. Next, first observe it under low power microscope and select good evenly spread portion of the smear and place one drop of immersion oil and then carefully adjust the microscope using oil immersion lens. Count different white blood cells using a cell counter or write as shown on a paper on the left hand side. So in this smear you can see two neutrophils and few platelets and in this smear you can see one lymphocyte and one neutrophil. Identify and count different white blood cells as shown in this figure like A in this figure is basophil. B is lymphocyte, C is monocyte, D is eosinophil and F is a neutrophil. And about the principles of this staining technique. 
the staining solution contains eosin which is acidic stain and it stains the cytoplasm which is basic and it also contains methylene blue which is a basic component and it stains the acidic material in the nucleus and that is nucleic acid next experiment is determination of hematocrit pcv in this experiment packed red blood cells are measured and the requirements are patient's blood ventro tube pasteur pipet centrifuge and stopwatch the specific description of ventro tube is placed on the left hand side and the procedure is like this mix the blood sample carefully then label a ventro tube and then fill the ventro tube by blood by using a partial pipette and prevent mechanical breakdown of red blood cells and avoid trapping of air bubbles then place the ventro tube in a centrifuge tube as shown on the left hand side and use another empty ventro tube filled with water in the opposite cup and then centrifuge this ventro tube for 30 minutes at 3000 rpm and afterwards take out the tube and read hematocrit as shown on the left hand side now determination of blood cell indices well for the determination of mcv mch and mchc it is not necessary to perform an experiment but these values are required one blood hemoglobin value two red blood cell count three tcv that is hematocrit and the formula used for mch is equal to hemoglobin multiplied by 10 divided by rbc count mcv is equal to pcv percentage divided by rbc count and mchc is equal to hemoglobin concentration divided by pcv percentage mcv value is a measurement of the average size of red blood cells mchc gives mean red cell hemoglobin bigger red blood cells generally contain more hemoglobin while smaller red blood cells tend to have less hemoglobin and mchc is a calculation of the amount of hemoglobin per unit volume of a single red cell well patient's complete hemogram report is prepared like this and it is very important to understand the reported units of each cbc hemogram value and these are the normal values of cbc complete hemogram parameters now let us see how complete blood count complete hemogram determination you will perform during your internship and that is perform on hematology analyzers and that can be done in 2 to 3 minutes and the requirements are one patient's edta blood two rbc diluting fluid three wbc diluting fluid four hemoglobin test reagent five cbc standards these are called as calibrators and six hematology auto analyzer
First, hematology autoanalyzer is programmed for patient's identity number and personal data. Then blood sample is introduced 20 microliter automatically and in few minutes you get the CBC report with a printout paper. Well, principle of three-part differential hematology autoanalyzer is based on impedance technology and this can be explained as follows. If two electrodes are dipped in electrolyte solution and connected, electrical current flows as you can see from the glowing of a bulb. But if a blood cell comes in the way, then current will not flow and impedance resistance is created which is displayed as a graphic spike as you can see on the left hand side. Each spike is equivalent to one cell and the area of spike is directly proportional to the size of the cell. Cells are then counted per liter of blood. In the inside the analyzer there are two chambers and in RBC chamber cells less than 20 femtometer are counted as platelets and cells between 25 to 350 femtometer are counted as RBCs. In WBC chamber, all red cells are hemolyzed by WBC diluting fluid and hemoglobin is determined in a colorimetric unit and cells are counted as lymphocytes between 35 to 90 femtometer, mononuclear cells between 90 to 160 femtometer and granulocytes between 160 to 450 femtometer. It is important to note here that in RBC chamber blood is diluted 50,000 times and in WBC chamber it is diluted 500 times. Well, in this online CBC practical, I have considered all these points. For more information on CBC practicals, refer to chapter 38 of our ML2 book. And for hematology autoanalyzers, kindly see our related videos on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe and share our videos. And next time, I will bring you one more interesting topic. Till then, keep yourself in cheerful mood and stay safe. All the best.